Hey, hey, what's up, Mike? This is Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about networking switches, everything you need to know. And we're gonna cover three different concepts or topics. First, the differences between switches, managed versus unmanaged. And next, we're gonna talk about how many switches can you have in your home network? Is there a hard limit or is it unlimited? And third, we're gonna explain how unmanaged switches send and receive data. And guys, if you don't know this, my name is Mike. I love technology, I love networking, I love computer builds, I love TVs, gaming consoles, all things technology. If you enjoy these things as well, make sure to hit subscribe and the bell notifications. And while you're there, give a thumbs up and share this video. And guys, consider joining our Patreon page where $2 a month helps keep this channel going. And the perks that you enjoy for $2 a month is a personal thank you in every new video. Also included is one tech support question per month. And the last perk is you're automatically enrolled into any giveaways that we have. And we do giveaways every five or six months. Let's get started. So first, what are the differences between a managed switch and an unmanaged switch. When designing your home network, a network switch is effectively the brain of your network. These switches connect all devices together on a LAN, local area network. And these switches are constantly redirecting and forwarding data to the correct destination. Network switches come in various sizes, and these switches can have up to 48 ports. So what is the actual difference between a managed switch and an unmanaged switch? In the most simplest of terms, an unmanaged switch allows you to immediately plug and play devices into your network, while a managed switch allows for much greater control. An unmanaged switch is simple. You connect all your Ethernet devices to it with no configurations. An unmanaged switch is perfect for the person who values convenience over security. On the other hand, a managed switch allows you to manage, configure, and monitor the settings of your LAN, including controls over LAN traffic, prioritizing certain channels, and create new virtual LANs to keep smaller groups of devices segregated and to better manage their traffic. And a managed switch also has features that can recover data in the event of a device or network failure. And an unmanaged switch has none of those features. As far as performance and security, a managed switch surpasses an unmanaged switch. However, an unmanaged switch is easier to use yeah, baby. <laughs> and costs far less than a managed switch. So part two, let's talk about how many switches you can have in your home network. And do multiple switches slow down your network? Well, I'll answer both questions in a minute. But a more important question is, how many switches should you have in a single home network? Well, this answer will vary depending on the size of your house and the size of your home network. So for example, if you have a three bedroom house and a family room and a living room, and most new home builders will install one ethernet cable per room. This would give you a total of five ethernet cables. However, if you install these cables yourself, install two cables per room. And when I say ethernet cables, I mean Cat5e or Cat6. Cat5e and Cat6 are the most popular in the industry. However, Cat6 has become the standard over the last few years. So now we have five ethernet cables going to five different rooms. And these five ethernet cables should originate from a network panel. And in case you missed it, I do have a video called Where's the Ethernet Cable Go? And there'll be a link right here to that video. So first, in this network panel, you should have an eight port switch or a 10 port switch. Since most routers only have four LAN ports, you will definitely need a switch since you have five ethernet cables that you need to connect. So now you have five rooms connected with ethernet cables. To optimize this ethernet cable connection, you should connect a five port switch to each room. By doing so, this will give you four more ports per room. And these four extra ports will allow four more devices, like TVs, streaming devices, gaming consoles, another PC, and this list can go on and on. So you can see why it's important to have extra ports in each room. So back to the original question, how many switches can you have in a single network? Well, there's no limit to how many switches you could have in a single network. However, the best practice would be to have one switch per ethernet cable, and no more than that. So at the end of each ethernet cable, you can connect a switch. And there's no real reason to have two switches per ethernet cable. You could tether two together with a crossover cable, but they do sell five port, eight port, and even 10 port switches. And in a single home network, an eight port switch or even a 10 port switch should be plenty of ports. And we use TP-Link and Netgear for our switches. And both are very reliable. And connecting a switch to an ethernet port is very easy. 
Simply plug the switch into an outlet for power and plug your ethernet cable into the switch. Now if you have a five port switch, you have an ethernet cable going into one port and now you have four more ports available for devices. And if you need more than four ports, then buy an eight port switch or even a 10 port switch. All right guys, part three, let's talk about how these switches send and receive data. And I'm talking about an unmanaged switch. Switches connect network segments and provide full duplex communication. So the big question is, how does a switch work? When a device is connected to a switch, the switch notes the MAC address of that device. And that code is baked into the network interface card of that device. And once again, this is a MAC address, which stands for Media Access Control. Now, the switch uses that MAC address to identify which attached device outgoing packets are being sent from and where to deliver incoming packets. Layer 2 network switches maintain a table in memory that matches MAC addresses to the switch's Ethernet ports. This table is called a Content Addressable Memory Table or CAM for short. The switch's CAM table is stored in memory. If the switch is turned off, the table will disappear, and the switch has to relearn the table when it's rebooted. And when devices on the switch begin sending messages, the switch will start recording MAC addresses and the ports that the messages came in on. So for instance, when computer A sends a message to computer B on the switch, the switch does not know where computer B is. So the switch forwards computer A's message to all computers on the network, except for computer A. And this is known as flooding. So when computer B replies, the switch records computer B's MAC address and port as well. So the MAC address identifies the physical device as opposed to a network layer three IP addresses, which can be assigned dynamically to a device and change over time. When a device sends a packet to another device, it enters the switch and then the switch reads its header to determine what to do with it. It then matches the destination address or addresses and then sends the packet out through the appropriate port or ports. And that port leads to the destination device. So guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and for God's sakes, hit the bell icon. And we'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.